Welcome to Art for Everyone. I am Tamsin Roberts, and today I want to share with you my thoughts on making art more inclusive. I've broken this philosophy down into four main parts. These are accessibility, understanding, enjoyment, and ownership. And what qualifies me to talk about this is my background is completely dedicated to making art accessible to everyone, from Beijing, where I started a gallery and a, my own art fair, to Hong Kong and London, where I worked in the established art, art world, high-end art, and now I'm back in Melbourne working in the, in the accessible space. So I thought what I would do is talk a little bit about Melbourne and China, as these are two markets that are obviously relevant um, to me, but also hopefully to us here today. Melbourne is full of a discerning audience, a very educated, cultured group of people who have ample access to art, but there are barriers standing in the way, I think, and I have also um, experienced, um, to enjoying that access, to being welcomed into galleries or um, the art world at large. Uh, people are very opinionated here. And conversely, we have China, a country which is so quickly developing and with a massive middle class that isn't particularly interested in collecting art yet. They're more interested in fast cars or apartments or, or iPods or Louis Vuitton cases for their iPods. It's difficult to get them involved in wanting to buy art unless you talk about the very moneyed people in China and they are the reason that you have the major galleries of the world opening in Hong Kong. Um, it also is a reason why many of the major galleries in Australia are in Hong Kong this weekend at Art Hong Kong. So bringing it back to Melbourne and talking about accessibility, we have physical access to art. We can go to museums, art galleries, um, artist studios, festivals are all around us in Melbourne. And also we have the streets. If you just keep your eyes open and walk pretty much anywhere in central Melbourne, you have a beautiful visual assault of somebody else's creative energy, which is such a wonderful thing to have at our doorstep. However, there are barriers to this. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have, well, I know a lot of people who feel intimidated walking into certain galleries. They feel like they're supposed to know what they're doing there. And I have a clip here which highlights my point. An extravagant version of putting across my point that <laughs> that you have gallerists who inhibit the enjoyment of looking at art and you have collectors who are riding a wave or are on a bandwagon who want to just join a fashionable club and both of these make people like me feel a little bit, a little bit uncomfortable in that environment. So we can move on to understanding and in understanding we have you have two first impressions when you look at art. You like it or you don't like it. I knew I liked this when I first saw it, but I didn't understand it. I, it was actually on a name card that was given to me by an artist in China. His name is Marco Chandetti, and actually he's just had a show in Melbourne, which is a, a great coincidence. Um, I looked at this and I, I sort of intrigued, turned over the card and saw that the title of the work was I Love You. And it just made sense to me. Two completely mundane objects pushed together, joined at the center, yet with this wonderful ability to sway and move in equilibrium, which is what a meaningful relationship is actually about. And he, ha he feels very strongly about this concept. So I asked him how I could get my hands on this or be able to live with this. And he said that it's over. It was a concept. You pull the two forks apart, and they're just two forks. It didn't have a value. It was on a plinth, and the audience was encouraged to go and tap one side and watch them rock, which, again, is beautiful. And it turned my like of this into a love. And he gave me the JPEG. And so now I've got it on my wall in my house, and so do all my family members, because I couldn't not live without it. I couldn't not live. Oh. I couldn't live without it. <laughs> so another way we can um, understand art is through art writing, which I think there are two types of art writing. We have 
waffly ruining my appreciation of what I'm looking at art writing and you have wow it makes sense art writing this is uh, an image by Zhou Jun a photographer who I actually gave his first solo show to in Beijing a fabulous photographer I know very well this is something I found written about his work the red not only acts as a visual centerpiece, but also provides the audience with a sense of emptiness and weightlessness. Together, these characteristics act as a point of support for the viewer, impelling them to readjust their balance of perception and recognition. Now, I hope nobody in the audience wrote this, but <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I know what that means. But I do know that the red is a symbol of China's force on the development of its country, regardless of what it might be doing to its past. When I look at this, I feel excited. I'm drawn to red. It's as simple as that. I enjoy looking at this artwork, and I understand that it's a metaphor for China's power. Enough said. Then we have Wang Wei, another artist I am very familiar with. Uh, she is a very academic artist who works a lot in documenting social history and even hidden history. Now, if I give you a bit of context, these photographs are all taken in three-star Chinese hotel rooms, something I'm quite familiar with, um, but you may not be. And this is uh, an extract from an essay by Davina Lee. The only element that appears to be out of place within the photograph is the awkward presence of the hotel attendant. Wong's sitters appear to be ill at ease, not only with presence of the camera lens, but also with their surroundings, despite their familiarity with every detail within the room, the quantity, position, and arrangement of every glass, towel, and bed cover. Neither a paying guest nor a property owner, these women have no place within the room itself, a fact giving rise to the palpable tension present within these portraits. Doesn't that make it clearer? So now I understand it. We also, well, I also enjoy art, and I think this is one of the fundamentals about making it accessible to people. In my enjoyment category comes, um, well, you can, who here owns art? Who has it on their walls? So it comes from, you can be gifted it, you can acquire it or it can be homemade. It's all still as valid as each other, but it's about our relationships that we have with the art we have in our house. Whether it's our four-year-old's picture on our fridge, that can give us so much more enjoyment than an artwork we bought for more than we could afford 10 years ago. It's all valid. I had a client in Hong Kong who came into the gallery pretty much every day for about three months, and he was always looking at this Warhol piece that we had. I was overjoyed when he told me about a tea party he was having on a Sunday and I said why don't I hang the work in your house for that weekend hoping it would be the deal breaker he wrote back to me on the Monday thank you so much it was wonderful my guests loved it it was such a joy to have on my wall could you pick it up on Tuesday so he wasn't ready to purchase art he but he did understand how to enjoy it and that's just his relationship with art, that's fine. Um, compare this to my sister, whose house is full of creative masterpieces that are all homemade or family made. This is a piece by my mum that she enjoys. She also has holiday pictures on her walls. And if she had the means or the access, she lives in Dubai, I'm sure her home would be full of artwork also purchased from galleries or artists. So. I feel like it's my responsibility, and certainly so far, my, the work that I've done has been to act as a translator between giving people access to what they can understand and enjoy, because everybody's impressions of this is di are different. Um, an artist isn't painting for your house, they don't care what your living room looks like, but if you can be put in front of artwork that really connects with you, it can enhance your life or your mood or your home, um, which leads me to, I guess, the ultimate, which is ownership. The question I'm asked most is, how do I know what is good? A very abstract question, and it could be answered over a course, uh, over a course of <laughs> books, but the easy answer is, do you have access to it? Do you understand it? And do you enjoy it? 
do you like it? And if the answer is yes to all of those questions, then it's good. Whether you want something that is more um, substantial than that, that's where consultants come in and you can always come and talk to me afterwards about the technique of artists, the, the, the value an artwork will retain. Um, another question I'm asked is, who should I buy? Which again, it's up to you, but if you want to buy sensibly and you want to put a money that is not insignificant to you into an artwork, then I have a lot of tips to offer. I brought three of them with me today. The first is Julian Meager, a 32-year-old artist based in Sydney. I think his technique is beautiful, I think his content is beautiful, and he's actually asking quite contemporary questions within the artwork that he's um, producing today. Then we have Jenny Bollas, who is a little older and works in a well, in photography, this is a photograph, and she can make it look like a painting. And the stillness of the content and, and the fact that it's such a beautifully meditative state within this image, yet draws me in because of its beauty, is sort of a question I don't know how to answer, but I love it. And then I have James Bonici who I think his brushwork is exquisite. He works on a rather, uh, on a rather small scale. Um, this piece down below here is just of a backyard, yet the precision and the angles and the shadows are also beautifully um, painted on this canvas. And then he's obviously moved on to um, wanting to put a bit of movement into his artwork, but you still have the perfect background. And he, I think, is a really great artist to look out for. So then there's the question of value. Why is something this big this much? And why is something this much this big? It's really easy. It's supply and demand. Well-known, established artists are generally worth more money because more people know about them and more people want them. Emerging artists are generally more affordable or accessible because the world doesn't know about them yet. Not everybody knows about them yet. And that's what I find is the most exciting part in an artist's career. They're still true to being an artist. They're not creating for a market. I mean, you could get me started on Damien Hirst. You know, they're really doing what they love and they're not overcharging for it because they're trying to make a living doing this. And this is the exciting part that you can get involved, the level that you can get involved at. So we are all responsible whether it's the government, the gallerist, the museum, to getting people, more people standing in front of artwork, getting more people understanding or enjoying it. And those who want to consume art, whether it's purely for enjoyment or whether it is to acquire it and live with it, it is our responsibility to not worry or care about any intimidation or snobbery. If you put AbFab, the collector, and the gallerist who, are, who subscribe to this certain set over here. This is the space that I occupy, and I encourage you to join me. Next Thursday, Art Melbourne opens. We'll have those three artists that I just highlighted exhibiting there. Um, Art Melbourne is everything I've just spoken about. It is accessible. Everybody is invited. Everybody can come. It is full of opportunities to learn more about art. We have a great talking art program. We have a really interesting group of galleries showing with us this year, including ones from the Asia Pacific and beyond. I, would, I think it would be impossible not to find something that you enjoy. There's such a diverse range of art coming to us this year. And ultimately, with prices starting at $100, you'll be able to afford it. Thank you.